you think that uh, Tibetan traditions mm. are adapting to the Western culture, mm. and if so, should they? Um, I think it's very much adapting to it. Uh, adapting to not necessarily the, the Western culture, but let's say the modern culture. Mm. Um, Modern culture, just like any other culture, offers a lot, of course, offers um, a lot of possibilities. Uh, possibilities in terms of um, um, if, if used right, uh, if applied uh, just accordingly, I think um, uh, it can help us, as we can see, help us communicate better, communicate uh, instantly and reach uh, vast populations uh, within a very short span of time. Um, and therefore, I mean, that communication is everything, yes? That communication will help us uh, achieve whatever we want. If you want to achieve, um, 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 how do you say, a medical breakthrough, uh, um, economic balance, um, whatever we like. I mean, we can pretty much achieve anything through, through having a proper uh, communication system. And the modernity offers that. Uh, but of course, uh, if it is not used wisely, then it could have all, all of the negative consequences, such as then it could bring uh, hunger, famine, war, whatnot. All the things that we see around, see in various parts of the world nowadays, and not just a few times, but more rapidly and in, in succession, um, and um, not necessarily, of course, we don't name it a, a world uh, war or, or such, but without having to name it, uh, it's, it's a constant war, yes, of uh, all kinds of crises. So, modernity, adapting to modernity, um, I mean, I, I could see that um, um, many of, uh, well, uh, yeah, my fellow Tibetans having sort of adapted to it, um, just like I think many uh, other cultures, I think. Yeah. But um, I. What I don't know is uh, how well they're adapting to it. Yes. Um, meaning, uh, are they adapting to a certain only, only to a portion of that modernity? And if if it is, uh, what what part of it? What portion of all the modernity? Because often modernity offers that idea of being able to achieve something very quick, very fast. Mm -hmm. So everything is a sort of you can fix anything very fast. But if it is just that, then um, are we doing it um, because uh, it gives us satisfaction? Um, it fulfills uh, sort of um, I don't know, or something. I mean, are we content with it finally at the end of the day? Because if you're not content with it, no matter how fast you could, you could you know, fix things, like you could, you could help achieve things, it will never be enough. And that we will want more and more. Uh, it will be as uh, um, if you can f achieve something, complete um, one set of errands in one day, and where it took maybe before maybe months. Um, in the in the past, of course, messengers had to be uh, had to write for days and days, yes. Whereas nowadays it's just instant. If that's the case now, what is what is the next step? What is um, beyond that, that horizon. And so therefore, if, if you're not content with it, then I think we're in great danger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then what happens is that um, uh, yesterday, I just briefly said to us, said a few things in Tibetan here. And uh, what I was saying there was that um, we must not lose our heritage. And uh, because uh, we are not known for many things, actually. Yeah because of the remoteness of the place where we, where we lived. Uh, we don't have much vegetation. Um, we don't have, of course, we have lots of minerals, but we, 
you don't have uh, the real need to sort of uh, harness those minerals and turn into things. Population was very small. And um, the only fascinating thing, you know, with the, the greatest pastime <laughs> was none other than practice. Mm -hmm. uh, beside that, maybe then, of course, not for daily, um, mm, not to say survival, but uh, livelihood was, of course, then uh, maybe livestock, of course, and uh, then maybe if if there are um, suitable uh, environments, then maybe a bit of farming, but not much. Just enough so that uh, one could uh, live quite comfortably, enough. And uh, then as long as we are able to combat the cold and uh, have enough to eat, then that was it. The rest, there was not much, um, let us say, entertainment, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so if it was day, it was day. If it was night, it was night. <laughs> Whereas over here, day means you can you can sleep in. Even if it's night, then you can, you can still just go about it as if it's day, yes. And I think many of uh, the monks and people who, who came, uh, I think, over here in the West uh, during my predecessor's time, I think uh, they were all very fascinated. And they said that, my goodness, out, out here, um, even in, in, in the nights, uh, you still have daylight, you know, artificial daylight, they said. So, <clears throat> um, so we basically have not much. But what we are really known for, um, ever since the arrival of Buddhism in our lands, uh, was then um, the practice of that. And so much so that um, uh, it somehow grew into everyone, it rubbed into everyone, everyone, every, every home, every family. Um, if, um, if a, a child began to, to, to speak, uh, immediately that child will know how to recite uh, various uh, mantras and scriptures and so on. And um, sort of their daily life sort of uh, uh, grew around that. And so therefore, um, I think in a way, the modern world or the 19th century world, starting from there, I think what they were really fascinated about Tibet was that, I think. But we had uh, very, actually, little means to actually to, to, to survive and live. Yet we were somehow uh, kind of content. And so they were fascinated about that and, and to understand why, uh, how come we are able to live like that. It's almost like sort of finding um, what we, I mean, what I find fascinating is like, for example, like, there are, you know, for example, birds like eagles, uh, vultures, they're able to nest in the most sort of uh, vertical uh, sort of uh, um, environments, yes, where you just cannot think of um, nesting. I mean, if the egg just tipped a little bit, that's it. You know? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> of course, I mean, they have huge span of wings, and so therefore, I mean, they're very strong, yes. By accident, if they Flat, if they flap their wing in a little wrong direction and just, oops, you know, <laughs> that was it. And they don't have many eggs. Yeah, but somehow they're able to live like that. It's like uh, the uh, snow leopards, which are very scarce now. <clears throat> so in the same way, I think there was some sort of fascination about that, I think. And... Um, and Fine. I mean, why not? Yes, why not? I mean, it is interesting. It is a um, very interesting um, sort of uh, environment to be fascinated with. And uh, mm, we didn't know much uh, why we were so fascinated um, for. But nevertheless, uh, we were fascinated in, in, in another way, sort of the, the modernity, you know. But my goodness, uh, there are things that are uh, that are sort of very magical, things that never existed before. Uh, for example, we can... Uh, I still have a... I mean, of course, nowadays, uh, it's pretty much um, a daily routine in a way, that we all fly uh, in and out, yes? But if you really think about it, uh, hundreds of luggages are flying in the air, yes? <laughs> in, in a metal tube. <laughs> 
hundreds of bags of peanuts, <laughs> chocolates, uh, Coca-Cola, water. Uh, it's like, um, have, you, have you seen that movie, uh, God Must Be Crazy? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, this you have to watch. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's something like that, particularly with the, <laughs> the thing with the Coca-Cola bottle. <laughs> It's, it's something like that. Yeah. It's, it's quite fascinating, actually, to, to know that you are actually flying. So we were also equally fascinated uh, with modernity. Um, uh, but um, uh, the risk is that uh, with the fascination with the modernity is that then uh, we could lose uh, our identity, our heritage. Uh, basically, I think it's the contentment that we had for a long, long time. And suddenly we are acquiring a taste for modernity of, oh, you know, uh, there are so many things to try. There are so many things, uh, so many flavors and uh, uh, so many textures uh, that one can uh, experience. But uh, once you know that there is no limit to it, then you suddenly you feel that, oh, I'm not living up to my sort of um, uh, standard in a way. And that um, <clears throat> as a result of it, then you begin to uh, give away the contentment little by little, yes. So therefore, from one generation to another, uh, if you observe, uh, each generation of Tibetans so lose a little bit more. Yeah. Now, for example, now we have, well, for example, these are two different generations, and I'm, I'm another. So each each of us, each generation, we lose a little bit more and more. Yeah. We lose a little bit more of the contentment. Now, for example, I become a little bit uh, um, uncomfortable when I know that there is no, uh, um, how to say, uh, cell phone reception. <laughs> <laughs> because I think it was a year ago that I was in Ladakh. Of course, it's it's just like a homecoming in a way, because the environment is very very similar to Tibet. Um, the environment is very raw, very bare, almost like as if it's uh, sort of uh, without clothes, because uh, it's there is no tree, there's no vegetation, so therefore it's like as if. The whole plane and the whole scenery is stripped of its uh, clothing, and uh, the, the the air is of course very dry and very fine, very thin, and of course the the evening skies are beautiful, of course, uh, but nevertheless, uh, as you go more and more towards the east, then uh, you begin uh, suddenly you come to a point where there is no reception at all, <laughs> <laughs> and then you become a little bit sort of. Uh, disconnected, <laughs> really. Uh, you, you can you can feel a, a lack of contentment, actually. Yes. And so, it's. It, I mean, I, I was fascinated with myself, because normally I would, I would, I, I wouldn't bother about those things, but then I could see there that you know, the modernity has got me, you know. <laughs> so, I like that. Um, I think. Um, um, we are adapting more than we ought to, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as a result of it, there's a great risk of re losing our heritage, yeah. mm -hmm. of our practice of contentment. Mm -hmm. And I think it's not just Tibetans, I think. It's the same with every culture, actually. Uh, every, every culture had uh, their own sort of a way of appreciating uh, what they were known for. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I mean, if I'm correct, you were all great explorers those days, yes? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, and uh, you had uh, was a very strong sense of identity of your own culture. But then with the um, modernity, then uh, we all become, um, um, how to say, uniformed. Mm -hmm. We all become like one of those objects uh, in a supermarket, you know. Yeah. 
everything's labeled, everything looks the same. Of course, now uh, um, we all have to sort of make sure that we don't get bored, so therefore now we put lots of descriptions <laughs> from each box. Yeah. <laughs> so that we feel that, mm -mm, okay, there is, a, there is some originality there, but... Um, I mean, one thing I would say is um, uh, it's kind of very tiring. It's very um, frustrating to some point that from one country to another, you have to change the electricity plug. <laughs> the most frustrating part. Uh, every time. Uh, yesterday, I went through the same frustration. <laughs> so I had to ask <laughs> for the for, you know, a, a set of plugs. Uh, but at the same time, um, I feel that maybe it's a good thing. You know, because then I, at least you can feel that okay, now I'm now I'm here. You know? I'm not just anywhere, but I'm somewhere now. Yeah. So uh, on that part, maybe it's a good thing. So like that, you know. Mm. Yeah, so it's difficult to say how uh, helpful this modernity is. Um, if used right, I think it's great. Yeah. But if not used right, uh, you can swallow all of us up, you know, and very rapidly. Mm -hmm. yes. Maybe it's a good thing also, because it's rapid. Then we will go back to Stone Age. You know? <laughs>